Today, I'll review Plug Power's first quarter 2025 financial results, spotlighting a new hydrogen liquefaction plant in Louisiana. Second, I'll analyze the European Union's delay in classifying nuclear-powered hydrogen as a low-carbon fuel and its implications for the hydrogen market. Third, I'll assess a compelling vision for unleashing America's hydrogen potential through diverse production methods. All of this on today's Hydrogen Podcast. Our first segment examines Plug Power's first quarter 2025 financial results, announced on May 12th of this year in a press release from the company's investor relations website, highlighting its expanding role in hydrogen production and liquefaction with key economic milestones. Plug Power reported $133.7 million in revenue, an 11.1% increase from Q1 of last year, driven by a 575% surge in Gen Eco electrolyzer sales and sustained demand in material handling for clients such as Walmart and Amazon. A landmark achievement was the commissioning of a 15-ton-per-day hydrogen liquefaction plant in St. Gabriel, Louisiana, a joint venture with Olin Corporation, boosting U.S. production capacity to 40 tons per day alongside facilities in Georgia and Tennessee. The company deployed 848 fuel cell units, secured a 3-gigawatt supply agreement for green hydrogen to ammonia project in Australia, and surpassed 8 gigawatts in global electrolyzer contracts. Financially, the gross margin loss improved from negative 132% to negative 55%, and net cash used in operating activities decreased to $152.1 million from $288 million. These improvements were supported by a new $525 million credit facility from Yorkville Advisors and cost-saving measures under Project Quantum Leap, targeting $200 million in annualized savings. Plug Power ended Q1 with $295.8 million in cash and cash equivalents, bolstered by $30 million in energy storage investment tax credits from its Georgia plant and reported a $0.21 loss per share for the quarter. The Louisiana plant employs renewable-powered electrolysis to produce hydrogen, which is liquefied at negative 253 degrees Celsius via cryogenic cooling, enabling high-density storage and transport for applications in mobility and industrial sectors. The process is exceptionally clean, producing no SOX, NOx, or PM2.5, as liquefaction relies on refrigeration rather than combustion. Scalability is supported by Plug Power's integrated ecosystem, electrolyzers, fuel cells, and fueling stations, though global electrolyzer manufacturing capacity and grid infrastructure requirements pose constraints. The 3-gigawatt Australia deal and 8-gigawatt contract pipeline underscore the technology's global applicability, particularly for ammonia synthesis, a key hydrogen derivative. The press release provides clear economic metrics that reflect Plug Power's financial trajectory and strategic positioning. The $133.7 million revenue, up 11.1% year-over-year, signals robust growth, primarily from a 575% increase in Gen Eco electrolyzer sales, indicating strong market demand for hydrogen production equipment. The gross margin loss improvement from negative 132 to negative 55 demonstrates progress toward profitability driven by Project Quantum Leap's $200 million in annualized cost savings, which include operational efficiencies and reduced overhead. The reduction in net cash used in operating activities from $288.3 million to $152.1 million reflects tighter financial management, preserving liquidity for capital-intensive projects like the Louisiana plant. The $525 million credit facility from Yorkville Advisors provides critical funding, reducing reliance on equity dilution and supporting the company's $295.8 million cash reserve. The $30 million in ITC from the Georgia plant, part of the U.S. tax incentives, directly lowers the cost of the infrastructure investments, enhancing economic viability. However, the $0.21 cent per share loss underscores ongoing financial challenges as Plug Power balances high growth with profitability. The 3-gigawatt Australia deal, part of 8 gigawatts in global contracts, positions Plug Power in the expanding hydrogen to ammonia market, though the press release does not quantify specific revenues from this agreement. Plug Power's Q1 results and the Louisiana liquefaction plant established the company as a leader in liquid hydrogen supply, overcoming the logistical limitations of gaseous hydrogen. The financial metrics, revenue growth, margin improvement, and strategic funding signal a maturing business model. 
and this development reframes hydrogen as a scalable energy carrier, setting a precedent for private sector innovation in the hydrogen economy. Our second segment reviews a May 13, 2025 Reuters article detailing the European Union's draft plans to delay classifying hydrogen produced from nuclear power as a low-carbon fuel until 2028, a move that has sparked concerns within Europe's nuclear industry. The European Commission is drafting standards to define which hydrogen types qualify as low-carbon fuels, aiming to foster a market for clean energy sources. According to the draft seen by Reuters, the Commission will assess a classification for hydrogen produced via nuclear-powered electrolysis, where a hydrogen producer signs a power purchase agreement with a nuclear plant by July 2028, with consultations starting in June 2026. This timeline, which delays recognition by three years, has drawn criticism from Nuclear Europe's Director General Emmanuel Bruton, who argues it hampers nuclear-based hydrogen development compared to renewable-powered alternatives, potentially stifling the nascent hydrogen market. The EU aims to replace hydrocarbon-derived hydrogen with cleaner alternatives, but member states are divided. Pro-nuclear countries like France, Poland, and Sweden advocate for nuclear's inclusion, while Germany and Denmark prioritize renewables like wind and solar, citing the need for rapid expansion to meet energy goals. Experts from EU countries will discuss the draft on May 15th of this year as the bloc navigates these tensions. Nuclear-powered electrolysis splits water into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity from nuclear reactors, producing no NOx, SOx, or PM2.5 as the process involves no combustion. Nuclear reactors providing baseload power ensure consistent hydrogen production, unlike weather-dependent renewables. Scalability is moderate, constrained by high capex for new reactors and regulatory hurdles, though existing plants offer immediate capacity. The technology reliability supports the industrial applications like ammonia and steelmaking, but the EU's delay risks slowing project development, favoring renewable-powered electrolysis, which faces grid and land-use constraints. The process cleanliness aligns with EU's goal to phase out hydrocarbon-derived hydrogen, but nuclear waste disposal remains a concern for opponents, though it's unrelated to hydrogen production emissions. The EU hydrogen market, valued at $20 billion, is projected to grow to $100 billion by 2030, driven by industrial demand. Nuclear-powered hydrogen costs 3 to $5 per kilogram, which is competitive with renewable-powered electrolysis, but higher than hydrocarbon-derived hydrogen with CCS. The delay until 2028 could deter investment in nuclear hydrogen projects as producers miss out on low-carbon certifications that unlock subsidies and market access, potentially costing the industry 1 to 2 billion euros annually in lost opportunities, this per the Nuclear Europe estimates. France's 70% nuclear-powered grid positions it to lead, but Germany's renewable focus and tariff risks increase costs by 10 to 15%. Private equity may hesitate to fund nuclear projects without policy clarity, favoring renewables or U.S. markets with clearer tax credits. The delay's economic impact could redirect capital to renewable hydrogen, though nuclear's baseload advantage supports long-term viability. The EU's delay reshapes the hydrogen narrative, prioritizing renewable-powered electrolysis over nuclear alternatives, despite nuclear's clean and reliable profile. This risks fragmenting the European hydrogen market as pro-nuclear states push back, potentially delaying the EU's 10 million ton clean hydrogen target by 2030. The policy uncertainty underscores the need for a balanced energy mix, with nuclear hydrogen as a strategic asset for energy security in industrial hubs like Rotterdam, fostering a competitive global hydrogen economy. Our third segment reviews a May 12th article from Real Clear Energy, published by the Energy Policy Network advocating for U.S. hydrogen leadership through diverse production methods to achieve energy dominance. The article highlights three hydrogen production methods, hydrocarbon-derived hydrogen with carbon capture and storage, exemplified by ExxonMobil's Baytown project, geological hydrogen, as advanced by Hytera's Kansas Wells, and nuclear-powered electrolysis, such as Excel's Energy Prairie Island Initiative. These leverage U.S. resources, 7,400 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, pre-Cambrian geological formations, and 94 gigawatts of nuclear capacity to meet industrial demand in steelmaking, ammonia, and transport. The article notes policy challenges, including trade barriers, and urges regulatory support to counter China's $7 billion hydrogen investment, emphasizing energy security and economic growth. 
Hydrocarbon derived hydrogen with CCS using natural gas reforming and 98% CO2 capture minimizes NOx through advanced burners producing negligible socks due to low sulfur gas and generates no PM 2.5 offering high scalability via existing pipeline networks. Geological hydrogen extracted through conventional drilling is the cleanest producing negligible pollutants but its scalability is limited by reserve uncertainty requiring extensive exploration. Nuclear-powered electrolysis leveraging small modular reactors produces no NOx SOX or PM2.5 with moderate scalability constrained by regulatory approvals and high capex. Each method's technological maturity varies. CCS is proven, geological is emerging, and nuclear is transitional, offering complementary pathways to meet diverse market needs. Production costs range from $0.50 cents to $1 per kilogram for geological hydrogen, $2 to $3 for CCS-based hydrogen, and 3 to $5 per kilogram for nuclear-powered electrolysis, serving a $10 billion U.S. hydrogen market. CapEx is significant, $10 billion for Baytown, between $1 and $5 million for geological wells, and $1 to $2 billion for nuclear facilities, requiring private capital. Job creation and energy security enhance economic cases, but tariffs could increase equipment costs by 10 to 20%, impacting electrolysis most. Geological hydrogen's low costs attract private equity, while CCS and nuclear appeal to institutional investors seeking stability. The $200 billion global hydrogen market by 2030 supports demand, with U.S. leadership hinging on policy clarity. This vision reframes hydrogen as a strategic asset for U.S. energy dominance, diversifying production to mitigate risks and meet varied applications, positioning the U.S. as a global hydrogen leader through technological pluralism. All right, that's it for me, everyone. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a good review on whatever platform it is that you listen to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, whatever it is. That would be a tremendous help to the show. And as always... If you ever have any feedback, you're welcome to email me directly at info at thehydrogenpodcast.com. So until next time, keep your eyes up and honor one another.